Welcome to Trading Lounge and the European Indices for the 27th of April. Starting on the weekly chart with the DAX here, there's a good case that all of this is just corrective because we've got three waves here and we've also got three waves here as well. So, uh, and making a new high here as well. So it really makes this whole thing corrective. But how this plays out is always a little bit unsure. Wave fours can get rather complicated in its simple form as an expanded flat correction, then we would see the market just continue to the upside from this point here. This uh, box up here is the 50 and the 61.8% retracement level. We can see that the market's struggling a little bit to, uh, to, to get to that space. So it's quite possible that the market can, you know, fail from here and end up with another five waves down here further, um, or even another three waves. So we don't really know what the answer to this is. The S&P and the NASDAQ are the same within all this space, and they've got, we're using the same type of uh, pattern here for this for them as well. So we've always just taken it step by step, and in a conservative way, just looking at the daily chart here, <clears throat> we've looked at it in terms of <clears throat> a wave A, B and C to the 50% retracement level. Uh, sure, it can go uh, higher here. If this market found support on top of this, this 11,500 here, which in terms of the trading levels is a medium level, then we would it would have a bullish count from that point. <clears throat> we are looking at this count here um, also being bullish uh, as well in line with the S&P 500. And there's a couple of ways to count this up. You could count it up as wave one here and two here and three here and four here and five here and then have a pullback, an ABC pullback you know, once you've got an impulse wave to the upside, you can pull back 50, 60% and then move up there again. But I don't particularly like the count where we've got wave one and two here and three here and four here and five. Yes, it fits quite nicely, but it doesn't fit with the count that we have on the on the other markets around the world, the NASI and the S&P and the, even the FTSE and so on. So, um, and that's because that this little structure in through here found support on top of the 8,000. But um, on the NASDAQ, it, it dropped lower here. On the FTSE, it dropped lower as well. So I think we need to be a little bit cautious about how we use this particular one through here. Um, so we're still in this space where, we're, where the structure doesn't really give a clear... Um, you know, pattern of, of it all. So I'm a, I am rather bullish because of the uh, the, the Nasdaq uh, and and the S and P. Which is sort of dragging its feet a little bit, you know. So on on this structure here, where we've got just sort of forgetting about this for a moment, or you can even include it into this count here, but up for wave A here, or wave one here. So I'll just copy that and put wave one here as well. And then back for wave two here, and then up for wave three here. We haven't really had overlapping wave structures here with the top of wave A here, it's been close, but um, it, this is possible, this count. This count here would be in line with uh, the um, well, I'll say the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ has, has been leading to the upside. It's moved above its 61.8% here. It's trading above that 61.8%. And um, also, too, with the... I've got this here as an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here. But I know that with the NASDAQ, we can move this over to here. And then we can have a look at this as wave one here and wave two here. It doesn't really have the right look and feel about it uh, as such. I should have copied those, so I will just copy those so this does count up for five waves here so I think that's sort of interesting and this market here uh, the pattern here let's just we can see that this level here this um, 10,500 here <clears throat> is really a bit of a balance point for this market, a bit of a line in the sand. And we've it looks bearish because we've got uh, these lower highs coming into play here. So yes, of course it could fail at the 500 and move down from that. So we really need to be able to put that 
under here. You might be able to put it under that one there as well. But I'll just put it there for the time being because obviously we don't want to, you know, marry a particular side in this in, in this market at this stage with all of this. So if the market is going to drop, well, we need to be on the right side at the right time. So this would be the this would be a safe place to do that. Um, however, if this market finds support on top of the 500 here, then we need to be long from that point. And we need to look at it like this here. And this would also be wave one up here and wave two back here, and then also moving up through here. So it's pretty simple in a way if we just, just look at it. This is the sort of the old and more natural sort of count that I had for it. But I think that if we we're going to line it up with the S&P, then we need to line it up in this particular fashion here. And if I can just delete these here, then we would have this here as wave one here. And once again, a very low wave two. This is very low compared to this move up here, but it is five waves up here. And this can be counted as corrective back here. This can be counted as five waves here. I'm not, I can't recall about this one, but um, yeah. So it look, it, all in all, it can fail from here. And we can also just move that up into this space here. But if this market finds a support, it would obviously come up here and react, which it has done uh, a few a few times uh, here with this. But let's just say that we get the first high. above the level that's what we're looking for okay and then after that there'll be some sort of corrective move and then up and then we can go along from this point so i can just delete that and bring this here and bring this over to here you may be able to get a better position over here once the markets drop back down through here and then you can also use this top here to add to the positions here so you can build in two or three trades uh, in the early stages uh, of this but like I said, we need proof that the market is going to find the 500 as support and not resistance. And it's going to take a little while. I mean, a spike up like that is not support. Yes, yeah, a breakout. But most breakouts come back and retest their support lines anyway. So this this is not support. So you do need it sitting on there as, as support for this. Just coming back to this... Um, chart here where we're looking at this as one here and two here and three here and four here for this I know it, do, it does, doesn't quite have the right feel about it but when you look at the NASDAQ pattern here just for a moment here you'll see that um, we've got this lower move down through here and then we can look at this as one ABC for two here, one, two, three, four, a nice third wave up here, a fourth wave pulling back to the 38.2% retracement level. And then we've got a move up here that looks like five waves here and a correction here, 61.8% that we're looking for. And then a move up, move starting to go higher here. We're not you know, it could still be a, all part of a wave four here and it could still crash from this point, but um, it is it is pointing upwards. Um, and there is a lot of money in the system. You know, there's, uh, for the US, it's like $10 billion a day to, to run their support campaign. And, you know, the feds came in here and the treasuries came in here and there's, you know, another little 400 85 billion dollars just for main street basically and there's going to be another big package coming out too in the pipeline it'll be much bigger than this one that's just come out so it may even help this push push this up here further for this so um yeah i know a lot of people are bearish but um haven't really been given any indication for being bearish at this stage I mean, it looks bearish, but we just haven't had any evidence of being bearish. So I've always stayed to the long side. This is the FTSE here as well. So we could also look, just just the one hour chart here. We can also look at this as wave four here in line with the S&P and the NASDAQ and so on. So wave one here, because we do have five waves up through here. This counts as a nice corrective wave. This also counts nicely as an impulse wave. It's pulled back to its 61.8%. So we can do this here again here. So in this case here, and I probably talked about it last time we spoke, is 
that we need this 800 as the support. If it's going to fail, this is where it's going to fail from. So understanding this as support here is critical for being successful. So we'll see the arrival, the reaction, which we've had here now. We're still looking for the first high above the level. And then we'll want to see some type of, you know, correction and then it'll give us this high and it'll give us this high and maybe even another one uh, here. But uh, yeah, we want those highs to be taken out and that will help us, help help prove to us that the market is is going higher. So we want that proof that it's going higher and we don't we don't have that set up yet. But it is falling into place. But at the same time, you know, this all this here could be maybe I've counted this wrong and this isn't this is down for wave one here on A wave, then an A and a B and a C wave, that fits. And this down for one, A B C back for two here and fails from this point. But if that's the case, we have it covered at this point. That's the main point here. We're just looking because markets are just trends and corrections of different degrees. And in a way, this move here is corrective. It could be also impulsive, but the main point is, is it's got an accumulation been going sideways. So we can look at it in Richard Wyckoff's terms as an accumulation pattern. And we'll yet to see the distribution on that so far. So either way it goes, we, we just need to be on the right side at the right time. So it's really all about the 5.8 here, even though our short trade won't come in until much later. And the long trade still needs to wiggle around into this space here to sit on that level of support. It needs to sit on there and then we can take like here and just take out the highs. You just need to be patient. Um, and they may not trigger. They could just come further down. So uh, we just look for setups and if they get triggered, they get triggered. And the thing with trading is the 80-20 rule comes in a lot. So, you know, out of... Uh, if you think you're a reasonable trader and you can get five out of five trades out of ten correct, then that's pretty good going. But those remember those five trades that are that are winning trades. They're all not going to be you know fantastic winners. You're going to out of those five winning trades, you're going to get some that break even, some that make a little bit of money, and you'll probably get one, two, or three of them. Normally, two of them that will run quite well. So out of those ten trades, you'll get two of them out of 10 trades, you'll get two of them that run well, and they're the ones that you make your money on. That's kind of how it sort of pans out. So um, the other, and you have to let them run as well. You know, you can't take profit on those too early because what's the point of, of that? It doesn't, it's not part of your, your whole system of method. You need those two trades to run. So you need to, you know, have courage and you need to have a trailing stop loss in place but not too close don't get too nervous because you'll get slapped and the other side of it too is that if you've got those five losing trades well how much are you losing on those you know if you've got an account under 30,000 or 50,000 you should be working you know around your one percent mark um, over 50,000 you would start shaving it down to half a percent or something but you need to get down so those five trades that you lose if you say that you've lost five five one percent on each of them that's five percent and then your other three trades sort of break even or make a little bit of money that's okay and those two trades that's where you make your money on so that's what you've got to aim for so you need even if you're a, a really short term you know intraday trader you still need a, an intraday trend to make money on you know you still got to get your uh, you know, you still got to capture some something like this here, a nice move here. You need to capture that within your 10 trades each time, you know. Uh, anyway, just shooting the breeze. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.